Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we will be doing a software highlight. Today we'll be looking at this program called Stellarium. Let's flash up the program. Stellarium is an uh, interactive star map that you can use to get your bearings on where planets are at what time. But first, if you need to download it, you go to stellarium.org. Um, then you can simply just download it. You have the download links up here, and you can see it's available for pretty much every platform. Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, as well as Beta. So, the actual program here. First thing you want to do when you go in to the program first time is you want to go in to the location window. In here you can set the area from where you want the program to display the night sky. So for instance I am in Copenhagen. So I could select the Copenhagen University Observatory as my location. We can see now it's changed up here. It set me 10 meters above because the above the surface because that's how high the, um, the observatory is. And over here we can see the current time. Right now the sun is still up, so we can't really see any stars. But luckily, this program allows us to fast forward. And we can just fast forward until, uh, let's say a little bit further. Ah, this is okay. This is just uh, five minutes past 11 tonight. And we can see that we have uh, towards west we, have west, we have Venus and Jupiter, Jupiter, and to the south, we have Saturn. Now, you might notice this grid that's um, overlaid. This is an equatorial grid that you can overlay. It's very useful if you use a telescope with an equatorial mount, but if you're not, you might as well just use the other grid, um, which is centered at Salit, just above you. This allow, allows you to look um, how high the stars are above the horizon, which I find very useful. So, for instance, if I wanted to look at, say, Jupiter, up here, you can see it's just above 20 degrees above the horizon. Recalling that um, a fist at arm's length away um, is approximately 10 degrees. So, this is um, two fists on top of each other of the horizon. This is an easy way to find um, find some of the stars that you're looking for. Now, if you're not that good at navigating the night sky, you could add the constellation lines, which is down here at this bottom menu. This should help you um, identify some of the key symbols. For instance, here we have Cassiopeia, and as you know, if we take Cassiopeia and follow this arrow, we get down to Andromeda. So if we have Andromeda right here. You can also add constellation labels, so you can see the actual names of the constellation. And finally, you can add constellation art if you really want to. Um, I prefer it like this, just the constellation lines. Um, I think it's the gives the the best overview. Now, as you said, as I said, you could uh, fast forward and fast backwards um, with these arrows, but we can also go into the date and time window. So, say for instance, I want to know how the night sky is going to look at New Year's Eve. We're going to go 216 January 1st, and this is going to be at 000. And there you are. So, this is how the night sky is going to look in Copenhagen at New Year's Eve, giving this clear weather, of course. Um, and we can change the date to whatever we want. We can say, how about in uh, 4,000 years? Like so. Let's move it back to some, some nice date close to. Now, if you're not uh, sure where to find the planets, sometimes they might blow the horizon. An easy way to do this is to go to the search window here and say, I want to look at Mars, for instance. I just type in Mars, hit enter, and we can see it hits focus the camera below the horizon. So if I'm out at around midnight, Mars will be below the horizon. Luckily, down here, we can also control the ground effects, so we can just remove the ground, or we could remove the atmosphere to remove the effect of the atmosphere. And if we zoom in on Mars, 
we can see that the program also simulates the moon phases of the planets. So here we can see Daimnos and Phobos. And if we fast forward, we can actually see the moons orbiting the planet. If we fast forward even more, we can see that the planet changes size over time. This is due to the two planets of the Earth and the Mars um, passing each other in its orbit. Um, and as it does that, the difference uh, in distance make the planet look um, a different size. So the program also models the actual size of the planet and gives a uh, quite good representation of the, the planet size. Once you're focused in on the planet, you can also go uh, up here. If you have a telescope, you can add different eyepieces, lenses, um, to simulate how it's the planet's going to look through your telescope. For instance, um, there's a default one. So this is approximately how we would expect Mars to look through an uh, everyday uh, telescope. You wouldn't, probably wouldn't be able to see the, the, the moons. Whereas if we, for instance, go to uh, Jupiter instead, we should be able to see at least um, two of the moons very clear and two of them might be uh, a bit smeared out together there. But it gives a good indication of what you could expect to see when you look through a telescope. The program here is also capable of actually controlling a telescope. So you can hook this up to your, your telescope and use this as a go-to computer. Let's just turn on the ground again in the atmosphere. There we go. Um, so I find this a, a quite a neat little program, both if you are um, want to do actual um, astrophotography to use this to control your um, your telescope, but also if you just want to go out stargazing um, and want to have a look at how the stars uh, move and where the different planets are at a given time. So quite a useful little tool. I think this is something that uh, every uh, amateur astronomer should have on, uh, on their computer. Um, this is it for this time. If you have any uh, suggestions for f further programs that I should uh, look into, you are welcome to contact me either in the comment or by email. Email is in the description. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, uh, take care.